it is finally time to start pulling out some of this code and um, turning it into utility functions, um, specifically around the idea not of just like automating this, but of giving sort of common tools for manipulating a, a, a graph, um, for adding nodes, for changing their IDs, things like that. Uh, in the last video, I ended looking at a bug that was based right around um, right around the fact that I was doing um, index changes on an array that had already been propagated with indexes. Um, so specifically, quite specifically, that would be object.keys. Uh, right down here, where I pull out all the keys and I update things and then once they're updated, the original array isn't updated, and I have old references that are no longer valid. The way to solve this, which I'm not incredibly happy about, is just to put the ID on the node. Like, that's the simplest solution. Um, and they haven't done that, basically because I just thought the JSON structure looked cleaner without it. Uh, but that is that is the way to solve it. Is right up here where I'm building a node. Um, we assign it to both places, and then instead of iterating over all of the keys, we iterate over all of the nodes. So let's fix the bug from last video where things were not working all correctly. Let's fix that really quickly. Cool. Let's paste that just because I think it looks prettier. Cool. So now everything has an ID. And down here, instead of like iterating over the keys, what we really want to be able to say is object dot keys index dot map um, we won't use arrow functions because we want to keep things cleaner And this means that we need to read off of the node itself. Which means that all of this stuff is about to get indented. Cool. Um, but it means that we've got to go through and take all of these references to the key. right up here and instead what we need to do is switch them out to look at the node ID cool um, and I'm just gonna do a macro to do that quickly um, All right. So the next one. Ooh. Cool. Like, yeah. Okay. Jump to the next one. And run the macro. What the heck? Oh, I'm doing my stupid macros wrong. I sorry, give me just a second to relook up 
for the twentieth time how to run Vim macros. At, at Q. All right, cool. Oh my goodness, semantic, my butt. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, that should be good enough. Uh, really quickly, does this look like anything is about to blow up? It does not. However, we don't want to relink nodes that are already linked. However, inside here where we are updating the indexes, we also need to set the ID. Ah, we've got to do this in order. I really hate this idea that, like, these things... Like, this is just a bug waiting to happen right here. That that this whole thing is needs to be run before... I don't like this kind of order-dependent code. In fact, I'm going to move this up a little bit just so it I can be sure that it happens first. I'll probably come back and try to, like, clean that up at some point. Um, so let's see what this does to the tests. Objects didn't match, but we no longer got an error. We no longer got an error. We just have a huge... This is going to be tough to debug. Um, but links are to two, so one is correct. ID is one. That's set correctly. Two is linked to three and four, but not linked to one. So I'm also not setting links correctly. I am also not setting links correctly because two should be linked to three, four, and one. Um, why is that not happening? When I hit an at link, that should get linked to both places. I've got index node.id, links, push. Herm. Probably because of this whole, like, don't relink nodes that are already linked. I suspected that this would be a bug. Um, let's... Let's actually be paranoid about this. Because I'm, I'm right about to start doing cleanup. So let's, let's be paranoid about this and run these checks separately. If something is already linked, then link it. Then then don't link it, but otherwise do link it. Let's see what that does. Nope, still not happening. What that actually suggests to me is maybe this is still getting cluttered up here, this index ID dot links. Oh yeah, I bet it is because concat does not modify in place. No dot links equals, yeah. Functional programming, cool, all right.
three, four, one. Um, do I want to? All right, sure. I can reverse the order of that. Do I want to though? Let me think about how this is actually happening. Yeah, I want to preserve the existing order. And cool. Oh, cool. All right, good. So it's a small change. We've got to deal with the fact that we now have IDs appended on our nodes, and they need to be kept up to date. That was one of the big reasons I didn't want to have them in the first place, because I didn't want to have to deal with updating them. But like, yeah, it'll be handy. Um, it'll be like a couple of extra lines. But I want to, before even like dealing with this to do down here, I want to start abstracting some of this out into other utilities. And I want to start thinking about like which of these would actually be useful. So I've got this big long list thing up here. And let's, well, what's, what's the first thing that I want? I probably want a way to create a node. Right? Because I create nodes in a couple of different places. Where do I create nodes? Build node is a place where I create nodes. Uh, so I actually have a function to start this out with. Build node is right up here. Um, and that would actually make sense as a good thing to start extracting out. Because right away inside here, there are a couple of places where I'm making a new node. Like right here, this should just be calling build node. So let's start with that. Let's do... Utils extractor. How do I want to organize this either? Uh, let's just make a new directory graph and we'd be like, um, And I actually just kind of want to pull out a whole bunch of this stuff and see what could I get away with pulling? What what does this need access to? Not a ton. Not a ton. It gets passed in a comment. So let's let's grab you. And bring you over here. All right, does anything look like it's about to blow up? We no longer need to stick this all into a thing. A node needs to be passed a comment to be built off of. That's a little... Like, I'd like this to be optional because I want to be able to call build node below and just give it a blank node. Comment's not going to have an ID attached to it. It's not going to have, like, text or anything. Um, or it's going to have text, but I, I, I want to, like, build a, a ready, finished node. And eventually, I want to start abstracting this stuff out as well. Um, but uh, I think for a first pass, it's fine to leave this in for right now. Open block is already kind of clean. I don't mind a huge amount that it's doing this, although I could very easily stick some constants up here. Node is stateful, 
which is a kind of interesting thing. Node is heavily stateful, and there's no way to get rid of this state. The state is, like, baked into the thing. So I probably want to make this more of, like, y either you should be able to instantiate this thing, or... Um, or it should be something where you pass in an array of comments or something like that. But I don't, that seems overkill. I'd, I'd rather have, like, I want there to basically just be let's change that to be, like, comment or something. And if I had, like, a function node, if, the, if I actually wanted to, to do this, what I would actually want to do is return, I would want to have the ID inside here. And as long as I'm doing this, let me very, very quickly look up uh, how process.hr time works. Um, because I don't want that comma in there. Actually, I don't even think I want process.hr time. I think I just want performance.now. Performance.now works at the tick level, I believe. No, I don't want performance.now. I definitely want process.hr time. The nice thing about process.hr time is that it is guaranteed to increment every time you call it. Like, when you get down to that level where you're doing seconds, nanoseconds. You know for certain that it'll increment every time. Um, and that's very, very important. I'll look into that more later. Um, but... Actually, maybe, because I do want the nanoseconds, and I do want the seconds precision for if you're running them at different times from each other. Although I think that process.hr time does not actually base itself completely off of the date. Basically, I, I want to, like, I want to make sure that um i want to make it very very unlikely that anything that you g that you generate in the past is ever going to collide like the only way you should ever get a collision it is if you run two instances at the exact same time and are like extremely astronomically unlucky that should be the only time you get a collision for now i'm just going to stick with process.hr time Like, that's what I would basically want from a node, to basically say, okay, these are the fields that are required, for lack of a better term, that you always have an ID, you always have a set of links, 
and your text is always a blank string. Well, even that, like I don't, well, nah, there's some, there's some operations you'd want to do on text and I can always check the length to find out if it's empty. So I'm fine with that. Um, and the utilities that I'm looking at that would be super helpful here are things like node.systemGenerated. Which would basically return uh, node.id. So if you get an underscore, that means it's safe to override this thing. Otherwise, it's not safe to override this thing. Um, so those are utility functions that I want. Neither of those are quite the same as like here, take a comment and turn it into another thing. This is more like a comment utility thing. But it's a stateful comment utility thing, which makes it more interesting, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, I mean, these are ultimately what I want. OK, let's, let's go back and um, just separate these out into the stuff that I actually know that I will absolutely want, which is a constructor for a node. I don't want, like, this should just be in utils slash node. Nodes.js. All right, cool. And this should just be like var utils equals. These should all be stateless stuff that's appended on here that's like build. We'll put this in here just to make things easier on people who are doing debugging. Eh, heck with those people. Nobody should debug anything. So these are both things that, like, I know I'll want. And, um... Let's just start from here. Let's just go into here and say var node utils or something. And then down here, I can start to do other things. Like, Node should also take, like, defaults and stuff like that. Um, because then we can do stuff like this. That's kind of handy. That's kind of handy. I don't think object that assign needs that to be an object, but um, yeah, we'll find out eventually. Um, so what that basically allows me to do is anywhere I'm saying node equals this whole build node thing up here. Instead, I just want to say uh, comment returns a node maybe it shouldn't maybe it shouldn't return a node like maybe comment should just like return no it should return a node
but it's stateful. I want my state stuff to be inside this loop. I don't I don't want my state stuff to be stuck in here. What is the state that I'm using for this? Let's get rid of this stuff. I have the previous and whether or not I'm in an open block. And I remember thinking that I wanted this to go away anyway. Um, that like needing to know, like iterating through nodes this way is, is not exactly what I want. Maybe not all of this gets pulled out. Like maybe like comments doesn't need to be a separate utility, right? The stuff in here that I would want to actually be a separate utility is like determining the type. Like I can have a set of comment utilities that's like give me the type of this. And inside here, where I'm doing this kind of stuff, like this should be using the node utils. Okay, um, yeah, let's file rename this, and instead let's just move this into utils slash comments. I want my utils to be mostly stateless because I'm, I'm probably going to be using them and like combining them and using them all over the place. So I want to keep my state all in one place. Not like all on one object, but I want to, roughly speaking, I want all of the state manipulations to be going in one place. Yeah. Yeah, so I just want to be able to get type and this gives us more consistency too because like for every one of these you're passing a node in and you're performing an operation on that node um, and for every single one of these you are passing in a comment and you're either performing an operation on that comment or you're getting information about it um, Just trying to think like if I want to have constants stuck on here someplace. Yeah, we'll fix things little by little. I already have some error reporting right here. This is all the type of stuff that I, I would very much want to have. And really, this should be something like utils.comment, comments.type, comment. Uh, so actually, I want to have... Um, one more of these, that's just me combining a bunch of these. Cool. Uh, what else do I want in here? Do I want the extractor? I'm going to leave the extractor as a separate thing. Uh... 
All right. We are extracting out the comments. We are building ourselves a graph. We have an index that starts as our base, um, which I will probably make a set of utilities for this as well. Um, Utils.comments.type, comment, works good. Decide what type of comment we're working with to build the relevant node. Node equals, node equals the build node comment, which only ever gets called in one place, right? Like, where else am I calling build node? If it's getting called in multiple places, then it really does kind of make sense for it to be a separate thing. But right now it's not. So let's just say equals. So let's leave this integrated for right now. And let's pull out all of this stuff and correct some of the mistakes I made before. Oh, come on. Be indented correctly. There you go. Whoa. Was not set correctly. All right, there we go. So we still have this giant like thing that exists here. But let's start let's start like breaking this down a little bit at least. So we would want to return Utils dot nodes dot build and we want to pass in a comment dot location. So we can just append some extra stuff to our nodes. That's fine. We can have a location, we can have a previous, and we can have a text is comment dot text. Did we ever set up like a dot next? We didn't, did we? So this linking previous to next thing um, should probably be like either a separate step or something because we need to have references to the, the future. Like, we can only retroactively fix this, and I don't really think it's clean to be building this kind of stuff this way. So we can do this as a separate step. This stuff looks normal. The code stuff, I mean, other than that the code doesn't work. Um, this append stuff is also, like, not actually doing anything. <laughs> um... So we're basically saying if there's no previous, otherwise we return the previous, but we're not appending our own text to the previous. So we, we do actually need to be able to say like previous.text equals and like, hey, that's another great t candidate for a utility to have on the uh, no utils. So let's go in here, and one of the things we want to do is allow 
append text. Here's the problem. with a pen text, which is, it shouldn't actually be util. Um, the problem with a pen text was that, like, the text can morph in a lot of ways, and util should be things that are safe to call whenever. This is not a problem. This is, this is fine. Cool. The, these two things have not been tested, so they may actually be quite buggy. That's another good reason not to abstract them right now. So we do no longer, we no longer have this whole previous next thing because it wasn't even getting set to begin with. But we do have a couple other things. Um, so I did not get nearly as much out of this as I wanted to get out of this. And I think the way to attack it is inside this sort of polymorphic stuff. But there is that whole shared state thing, which I haven't thought about, and I probably am not going to think about in this uh, video. In fact, this is probably running uh, fairly long at this type point. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit farther and then um, take a break. Better error handling, clean way of setting the open blocks. That's an open question. There should be some wins in here that a lot of these are operations that I want to just have exposed inside here. So system generated, I'm not using yet, but I am going to use. That's uh, basically going to help you not override. That's going to be for this to do right here. What we want to be able to do is say things like node So now utils wants a reference to the graph. I'm going to take a take a sec. See if my tests are still passing or if I've blown anything up. Okay, so I blew a whole bunch of stuff up. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. I blew many, many things up. Oh, but it's because this is starting at 1, not 0, so that's getting called once. Okay, yeah, that explains it. Uh, because those actually get the chance to build their own nodes first. Serialize and attach node down here. Um, the node is already existing, so we don't we no longer need like any of this at all. The only thing we need is index ID equals node. It's 
So here's another small win that we can get rid of. Yeah, there, and all my tests pass again. All right, perfect. Um, I'm going to take a break. I need to think a little bit more about this whole thing where nodes are dependent on the previous state in the graph and where a lot of the graph operations that I want to do require an entire graph, which I guess just means that, well, you make it a new graph utils uh, set of utilities. Um, but that state up there, I'm not sure 100% what I want to do with it. So I'm going to take a quick break and um, think about that a little bit and be back in the next video.